Now, moving on to the NRC, the NRC is a captured regulator. The, um, uh, the, this example just recently where the industry, nuclear industry, put pressure on the chairman of the Nuclear and, uh, Regulatory Commission and dragged him in front of Congress. And, and the guy resigned. He, and all he was was a regulator trying to regulate. But the industry didn't like that. And, um, and through congressional pressure, um, was able to get him thrown out. So these problems, um, start at the top. They start at Congress. You know, both Democrat and Republican, they, um, they are basically pro-nuclear. And that pressure then filters down on the commission. There hasn't been a commissioner in the last 20 years that hasn't been vetted and approved by NEI, which is the trade organization for nuclear power. But in the case of Gregory Jasko, who resigned under pressure, he apparently was trying to take the lessons of Fukushima into account. And the nuclear industry in this country simply wanted to pretend that Fukushima didn't happen. That's right. I met with uh, Chairman Yasko twice in the last couple of months on San Onofre issues. And uh, I can assure you he, is, he, he doesn't want to knee-jerk reaction show to plant down. But he wants to apply the law when the law is applicable. And his other commissioners um, desperately want to keep these plants running, even if it means bending the law or ignoring the law. Now, uh, Chairman Yasko, on the on the issue of the Fukushima modifications, was adamant that um, that these modifications need to be made promptly um, and thoroughly, and um, uh, the industry needs to take them seriously. But yet his his fellow members of the commission, and there's five of them, um, voted them down and delayed um, these decisions, and also inserted themselves into the process where if the staff came forward with a concern, the commission reserves the right to overthrow its own staff. So they, this commission, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, the leader of which, uh, the head of which, Greg Jasko, was pressured out, and the White House have uh, put up a, a woman, right? I can't quite remember, uh, remember her name, to replace him. I don't know whether she's going to be any better, but one of the bizarre things about what they complained about Jasko was that he didn't vote with everybody, and the reason he didn't vote with him with everybody was that he was actually voting for safety, and the rest of them weren't. I mean, it's it's an amazing thing that they could play roulette with the American people. Can you t- explain to me this the mentality of why this institution or this industry is so willing to risk American lives? Well, years ago, um, someone coined it as a, as a nuclear priesthood. And um, you, you either buy into the orthodoxy or you're, uh, um, you're excluded from, from the process. And, and I think that's, uh, that's at the root of it. Um, this is uh, not um, um, about science. These people are committed on a, uh, as an orthodoxy to nuclear power. Um, and, you know, it doesn't stop in the United States. It goes into the, uh, the IAEA, the International uh, Atomic Energy Agency, um, its charter is to promote nuclear power, but yet you'll constantly hear, well, the IAEA says that Fukushima is safe. So the same problems we have in Japan and the United States are also in the International Atomic Energy Agency as well. So I, I, I don't see uh, an easy way out of this because there's um, so much money on, um, uh, on the side of the argument to keep these plants running. Um, I think at the end of the day, it, boil, it boils down to money, though. And um, as alternatives come along that are cheaper, um, these plants will, um, will stop operating. There's an excellent Associated Press piece out just today about how San Onofre may never start up because the money doesn't work. The cost to fix is not worth the cost of replacing them with, uh, with alternative power sources. I think Wall Street, at the end of the day, will make the decision that the uh, uh, that the orthodoxy doesn't want made. 